So good morning. My name is Dave Thomas, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. Uh, presenting today is John Richmond. He has 30 years experience working within the rail industry and has been fortunate to work in many diverse areas, including freight operations, infrastructure monitoring and maintenance, vehicle testing, rolling stock production and refurbishment, and signaling. Career highlights have included being part of the team which developed the world's first high-speed hybrid train and managing the Ashford B Test Center during testing of the Pendolino fleet. And he has spent time working in the United States, Japan, and has been with Park Signaling for over three years as a business development manager. So it's over to you, John. Thank you very much, Dave. Thanks for that very kind in introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us and for the third of a planned four webinars on various things about products and systems. So, as we commence here, a little bit of a background to, to Park Cycling. So, who are we? We've been at the forefront of product innovation and customer collaboration. The original founders of Park Cycling were instrumental in the development of solid state interlocking, or SSI stickling, in the 1980s. So this foundation has enabled us to look at what's required to improve on the SSR signaling system and to help keep it functioning going forwards uh, and looking after such items of legacy equipment and preventing and help prevent a reduced case of obsolescence. So I think really we've got a very good reputation in the industry uh, for extending the useful life of older signaling equipment and telecoms equipment. Uh, which are no longer supply, supported by the original equipment manufacturers. We've actually devoted to involve this with good com communication, collaboration, and team working with our customers around the globe. So we've built on the knowledge of our engineers and the people who founded the company and the skill base and the new team that we brought into the business to develop a range of in innovative, technical, low-cost digital solutions for the benefit of the global railway industry. So we've got over 40 products which we can offer to the market at the moment, as long, along with our uh, services and consultancy work, which we undertake on a regular basis. Uh, on the list, you can see a number of our products that we have at the moment and ones that are under development. Uh, previously, we've dealt with our Remos Combi, our DLITs and ISVUs, and today we're just going to spend a short period of time going through the benefits of our remit system. So we'll start off very briefly. I know I've done this on previous webinars, but obviously we don't know that the audience can be different. So I'll just take you a little brief history of uh, the SSI signaling system. So basically SSI is a type of electronic signaling system. It's a solid state, SSI stands for solid state interlocking. And the system was developed in the, in the 1980s and jointly exploited by British Rail as it was then, GEC, which is now Alstom, and Westinghouse, which is now part of Siemens, Rail, autom rail automation under a tripartite agreement. So really it's a signaling system which uses electronics rather than the electromechanical relays which we discussed on the first of these webinars, uh, using the same rules for the equations in the, in the interlockings as based on the real ones. So a well-known, well-trodden, robust process of actually forming the logic for the interlockings. And we've been through the benefits of it before, obviously much easier to control, update, and it takes up a lot less room. So trackside equipment, uh, points, signals, and the such like, are connected to the SSI interlocking through trackside functional modules at the location where they are. So each mod module has a number of inputs and outputs. Uh, each output drives an individual function, such as a signal lamp, so it could be a red lamp, it could be a yellow lamp, whatever. Uh, and those inputs are used to send information back to the interlocking, uh, such as things like indications determined by track circuits, relays, or point detection circuits. So the communication between the interlockings and the TFMs, uh, which you see here, is by electronic data packages known as telegrams. So telegrams are transmitted by data links, and you can see the data link module on the right side of the screen there. Uh, and the data links are comprised of twin twisted pair copper cables. So they're duplicated for reliability and for availability. So you can see there, the various modules, you can see uh, signal modules on there and the optical, on the, uh, the data link module there on the right hand side. So why we developed this product? Well, 
we saw the challenge of this and the fact that the the SSI was the first computer-based interlocking system, and it's getting quite it's been getting uh, quite long in the tooth in certain areas, in certain respects of the equipment. But it's also a very very good product, which is going to be carry on being used out not just in the UK but throughout the world for a number of years. So it's proven to be a very capable, very robust system, uh, and it's still controlling probably a good third or more of the UK railway uh, infrastructure at the moment. The data links have actually been very robust in, and remarkably tolerant of problems that actually might occur out there. So performance issues, which may not be lead, continue, uh, lead at the time to a, a full failure, are masked by the SSI diagnostic processor, or can be at least, meaning that really only complete failures are reported. So that can, you know, very difficult to spot trends or when something's about to actually expire using a traditional system. So the traditional way, as you can see demonstrated here on the right hand side, is to count missing telegrams and it requires a te an actual technician to be present to read and assess these. So the way it's been done previously is a Peter system, which you can see there on the right hand picture. So each each data link has a Peter system, or historically it's had a Peter module attached to it. So the only way to actually look at the counts of missing telegrams on there was if someone to go out there, physically look at it and write it down. So as you can imagine, that's a very, very uh, time consuming and costly way of doing things. So that got us thinking and looking at some of the technologies we developed before. If you were here on the first time uh, webinar, we talked about our SSLA, SS, SLA, which is our SSI link analyzer. Uh, what we thought is we could use that technology to try and improve the way that uh, the data link missing telegram was looked at, logged and the information used. So what we came up with is our remote missing telegram detector or remit detect. So this is a system which monitors multiple SSI data links. So up to 64 in one cabinet, the cabinet you can see on the left hand side picture there. And what it does, it records the occurrence of missing reply telegrams and glitches. So as I mentioned before, it's used the technology from our SSI link analyzer, so it can gather this without impacting on the interlocking and takes that away because it's optically isolated from there. So what's the result of the work we've done that and what we found in installing these? Well, what we've, as mentioned before, what it means is that users can monitor continuous count of missed telegrams and also provides account for individual telegram addresses. You probably can't see it very well on the picture on the left, but that's the web page output you'll see there. It looks at every single telegram address. So this really, really proves to be a very, very powerful tool when you're trying to actually pinpoint the exact location of data link faults. And also for, for looking at trends, because you can actually store all this information. You can look at uh, each particular module or piece of equipment and see whether or not the number of missed telegrams is increasing. Therefore, you can target your maintenance to go and replace the module before it actually fails. So this is more predictive maintenance. You can actually go out there and be proactive and actually change out some equipment before it fails. So therefore, that's a much better situation and will stop you from incurring delay minutes. So on the right hand side, that's an actual installation out on site. And you can see how it all fits together in the case there. So really, as I said, it's really quite a short presentation on this product. We do have more information, but the benefits that we found from using Remit Detect are numerous, really, and this is only scratches the surface of it. So it's very easy to install. Uh, you make the connection via fiber optic cables, so it's very safe, and there's no risk of actually interfering with the data or the data link itself. It's a very cost-effective way of monitoring multiple data links. Uh, you can as I say up to 64 data links, 32 interlockings in one cabinet, in one place. And of course, that gives you a continuous remote monitoring in real time, which is a really, really powerful tool there. And it enables you then in conjunction with our Remos equipment and SLA to actually drill down to where the real issue is to go out on site, identify and actually fix problems before they become a failure. And finally, really on this, the very important part of this is it is a network rail approved product. So if you're there for network rail, you can actually go out there and order this product today. Okay, John, so we'll go up to Q&A. Um, we have had one question so far, which is about installation service. 
What can you tell us about that? So yes, uh, installation service. What we'll do, we'll supply when we when we actually take an order for a, a remit, we ask the uh, customer to give us cable lengths for the fiber optic cables link from the interlocking to the remit detect. So once we've got that information, we sit down and plan with, with your installation. What tends to happen is we'll come along and you normally install it on a wall or you can install it in a, a bigger cabinet. We've done both things on there. So really it's something that a technician, network rail train technician will be able to install the equipment itself. We've come along on the day to assist as necessary. Uh, so really it's a joint effort well, that that's included as part of the service excellent now you may apologies if you can hear some background noise our neighbors have a pneumatic drill out um you mentioned before about it being installed and covering about a third of the uk network how many units do we actually have installed in the uk we've got because uh, of various size we've, we're into double figures in the number of units we serve so for example on the on the western route all of the signaling from paddington to bristol is monitored by uh, Remit Detect now. Uh, we've also got it on various other regions of network rail, and we're continually getting orders for more and more. So it's proved a very, very powerful tool. It's one of those things it does, it's quite limited in what it does, but what it does, it does very, very well. And we know for a fact that this has saved thousands of delay minutes for operator for network rail, incurring uh, delay minutes from operators because they've been able to identify where a piece of equipment is going to fail or data link is going to fail and get out there and repair it. So it's a fantastic cost saver for the industry. Excellent. Right. Well, oh, uh, it's also located on West Coast. Ian has just jumped in to say, so thank you very much for that. We've had no other questions. So later today, I'll be sending out a feedback form. Please give us your feedback on the content and let us know of any further questions you might have. Thank you for attending.